Hey everybody, hi, Brian and Drew here, clinking it up, drinking some American coffee. Yes, indeed. Talking about Italy. A lot of American coffee, because <laughs> in Italy you cannot get any more than that. They really don't like abundance of coffee like we do here. No. So abundance we, of weak coffee. Yes. So like we went American to way. Italy last week. We did. Uh, Brian and I visited Aurora and Monte Grappa in northern Italy. And uh, I got the opportunity to see the look on certain uh, food service uh, professionals' faces when Brian tried to all order cappuccino and dessert. They looked at him like, why are you ordering two yeah, desserts? Yeah, they were like, a cappuccino after two o'clock, that, that should not happen. I did and a I lot like, too. I'm American, I want what I want. And let's, then we found, out that, we found out that that was taboo and we're like, okay, so we can still do it though, right? It's also <laughs> apparently weird to have gelato before your dinner. And then after your dinner, which uh, I also did because, what was my phrase? If I'm in Italy... If you see gelato, you're I'm going gonna, to eat it. If I see gelato, <laughs> I'm going to eat it. He said that at the beginning of the trip, and he kind of did. not joking. I became kind of known as like the guy who eats all the, dessert, the desserts. If I see gelato, I'm going to I'm eat going it. I'm going to eat it. So, um, yeah, so we went and toured both Aurora and Montegrappa. Um, we're going to follow up with some like detailed factory yeah. footage because we got to have like kind of full access just like we did with Lamy, right? So we're going to follow up with that. It's going to take a while to cut together the footage. Um, full disclosure, I gave them my word that we weren't going to use any footage without their permission. So um, we're not really going to have a lot of that footage here today. Yeah, we're going to run video. everything by them first and then yeah. you'll see something super cool, awesome and wonderful and amazing. Yeah, so we're working on that. It's going to take us a little bit. It's getting to a busy time of year. But we wanted to recap just a little bit kind of about what was our perspective of the trip, maybe what were some highs and lows and things that we took away. No lows. Yeah. I mean, I, I was a little rough going on this trip. That was a that was a low. So normally I travel really, really well. This was a pretty aggressive trip. So we traveled with Ken Rowe, our distributor. Um, they have a lot of experience doing, they are doing this pros. trip. They are pros. Got on the plane, head yeah. mask went on, blanket, boom, out yeah, like a light. They're pros. We are not pros at traveling. No, I got um, a little bit of sleep. <laughs> this guy. I got like 30 minutes of sleep on the plane. Pretty much so we, nothing. So we flew, we flew up to New York and then we flew from New York to Milan overnight so that we could wake up in the morning yeah. in Italy. It's a six hour time difference from where we are. And then we arrive in the morning and then we just drive straight to the factory and go hard all day long. And yeah. then no shower, we sleep, no when, hotel. <laughs> we sleep when we're dead. But um, I got 30 minutes of sleep on the plane. Yeah. So I was already super sleep deprived when we started the day. Yeah, you were a little that rough that day. day. I was in rough shape. That was a tough one. I was pretty much rough the whole trip as a result. It of did kind of set a tone, you know, when you, when you, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's tough to kind of fully recoup from that. Yeah, it was not, not the easiest thing, but I have no regrets because as soon as we got there and saw what was going on, oh, I wow. was, I was honestly blown away because it really was. You know, we have Aurora, we have Montegrappa. They're not like, you know, the most represented brands. We don't carry like the full line and it's not like we're launching every new thing they carry. Right. So for us, it was really kind of an exploratory trip. You know, we knew that they've been around for a hundred years. We knew that they're very intentional. They're pretty big companies yeah. in the grand scheme of things. And we know the they pens. make great pens. Yeah, so we were really curious like what we could learn more from these companies, right. share with them like what the US market yeah. is like. Who's behind the brand? What's their why? What's their story? Like what can we come back and talk about to maybe enhance our representation of these brands? Yeah. So I feel like we got a lot, I think we did that. I, I think, think so. That we I definitely think so. heard their stories both companies have an incredibly rich history that is not only just historical but they mm. weave that history into everything they do their production their yeah. pens the pens names like they really they don't just treat their history like it's you know in a, a log book it is actually a part of what they do mm. and now something both co both companies had absolutely so let's start off with aurora because we went there first um, you know, we arrived there, I was sleep deprived, but we got a lot on video, so I was able to kind of watch back and be like, oh yeah, that's ha that happened. <laughs> um, but anyway, we met there, we met the CEO, Cesare Verona, and he, um, he's a very uh, gregarious guy. Yeah. I mean, he's got a lot of personality. A Clearly, lot of personality. You know, I think he, he took over the leadership of the company about seven years ago, and it's very clear that he's a mover and a shaker and mm -hmm. has really looked to update the company because um, it's a hundred year old company. So you can imagine they have a lot of established processes, procedures, mm -hmm. machines, you know, things like that. Um, but he has really looked to modernize a lot of things there. And I just have a tremendous respect for what Aurora mm -hmm. has been trying to do in the last few years. One of uh, his more uh, 
iconic brain children, brain childs, brain, brain children. Brain children. <laughs> sure. <laughs> One of the more iconic uh, things he implemented, in, you know, in the last uh, seven years he's been in uh, business there is the museum. Yeah. Like that was a huge takeaway. They yeah. have a museum on site, which you know we'll, we'll show you later. But they pay homage, obviously, to Aurora's rich history, and they also, which I found super intriguing, and I'm sure you did too. They also have a section there where they chose 12 of, in their opinion, the most iconic fountain pens in history and displayed them with just you know full prestige and honors and respect. Mm -hmm. Outside of the Aurora brand, acknowledging that this is this is like just, one or two maybe Aurora pens. Yeah, there, but yeah. they had lots of different brands. You know, just kind of acknowledging that like they're just in they're a part of the whole, which I just thought was really awesome. Very respectful. Yeah, yeah. It's clear that they have a passion for writing. They have a passion for, you know, the craftsmanship. What they do, they make their own nibs. Mm -hmm. which I'm aware that, as far as I'm aware, they're the only company that does that in Italy, um, and it's quite a process. Yeah. Uh, they actually had a how it's made video from the Discovery Channel or whatever, like. I don't know, 10, 15 years yeah, ago. Yeah, it's an older like one. It's, I don't think oldie, it was ever uploaded in it's, HD. It's an oldie but goodie. Um, and so we kind of got to see that real time. And it was pretty cool. Um, so, and the factory is very clean. Very Everybody clean. Everybody working there is very happy, very passionate. I even looked under the there. tables and it was clean. It was crazy. Yeah. I mean, so it, clean. It goes to say something. Um, so, you know, the big takeaway there was like, wow, they really, they really care about what they're doing here yeah. and they have a lot of pride in it. And not in like a oblivious kind of way. It's like they have pride in it in a very kind of respectful and, and yeah. meaningful way. Intentional way, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and also they have a very kind of fashion forward look at things. So Linda, who's their export manager, she gave us a tour um, uh, in great detail of the mm -hmm. factory, talked a lot about the various things they're trying to do, coming out with colors. And so, you know, this, this is their 100th anniversary. They've come out with like 10 or 12 pens. Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> there's year. a lot of theming of style and artistry um, within their line and honestly within their offices as well. Yeah, it's ev it's everywhere. Yeah, so we're excited to show more about that. But um, you know that was kind of a key takeaway there. So um, you know they they're very thorough with their nib testing. They test a lot of different things in the process. They have like this robotic arm thing. Like, they, they do. Have, they had a robot. You know, they had a robot, and so uh, that was doing some polishing and stuff. So like they're very much looking mm -hmm. forward to things. So I was very impressed. I was not quite like prepared to no. see what we saw there. It was Overwhelmingly impressive. Yeah, it really, really was. So what were your takeaways? From uh, my biggest takeaway was, uh, do you remember their feed conditioning yeah, uh, process? That's right. That really surprised me. So Aurora um, has their own ebonite feeds that they use on their gold nib pens. And not only do they make their own feeds, and stamp their own feeds with the nib size underneath, which is interesting in itself. Mm -hmm. But they submerge all of their uh, nibs and feeds in um, ink that is inside of an ultrasonic machine. Yeah. So the ultrasonic machine vibrates the ink so that it actually permeates these, um, it's the feeds and the nibs, right? Uh, or was so it just I the think feeds? I think it's just the feeds. Just the feeds? Yeah. It might be act well anyway. I think they do the feeds first to condition it, and then they assemble them, and then they maybe also do it with the feeds. The yeah. Next. Either way, they condition the the business end of the fountain pen so that the ink has a chance to permeate the feed, and the nib just gets you know acclimated to this ink, so that it just and that's one of the advantages of ebonite is that it is slightly porous, so you have this really nice flow happening. Yeah. It assists in the capillary action as yeah. it flows through the pen. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy to work with. Ebonite is you know hard to come by, even harder to work with, which is right. another thing we learned in this yeah. trip. It's a natural material, so there's there's voids mm -hmm. in it, so there's a lot of waste in the manufacturing mm -hmm. process that just happens as a result of it being a natural material. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they take the time to actually condition their housing units it was just mind blowing to me. That intention to detail in every single one too. Yeah. So yeah. shouldn't be a surprise if you have an Aurora and it writes wonderfully. That's on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and so that's just one representation of some of the intentionality they have there. So that was really cool to get to see that. The factory was really great. They have a lot of history that they shared with us. So we're like we're looking forward to telling their story. Uh, from there, we then took a train down to uh, Venetia, where we met very briefly for lunch. Vincenza. Yeah, Vincenza, that's what it is. Sorry. Um, Venetia, I don't even know that's what That's kind that of is. Vincenza and Venezia combined. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, but we had a very quick lunch with the founder of Lachlan, which is not a brand that we're currently carrying, but it is one that Kenro imports into the U.S. Uh -huh. Very, very small manufacturer, basically. Super quick chat. An individual it was nice. guy and his son. Um, so they're making some metal pens. So just a little shout out to them. Super nice guy. Um, it was kind of like while we were on the way. Yes. We just had lunch with him. Uh, and then we went over to Bassano del Grappa to see Montegrappa. 
And it was very different because Torino is like a major city. It was yeah. actually the capital it was be big. before Rome. Um, it was the capital of Italy, and it's, it's a pretty big city. Probably yeah. a million people or so, yeah. maybe about the size of Boston. Bassano was very different. Bassano was like, what, 40, 50,000 people? More the kind of stereotypical Italian countryside that you see in uh, you know, the travel documentaries. Yeah, exactly. A lot, got, of the, a lot When I saw those really thin, tall trees, I was like, ah, look, it's one of those Italy trees. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Your dreams really, like, ah, was really fascinated it, with the foliage it, in Italy. The foliage was crazy. Everything was so lush and thick. I was like, a, a bush in the U.S. does not grow that thick. You could see right through it. But I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty lush here in, in Virginia. I don't know. There's something different about the climate up there. It grows, just, okay, it, grows, it, grows, it, grows, it grows super shrubs. Yes. I'm telling you. Super shrubs. There you go. Um, so it was small town, you know, town's probably a thousand years old. Yeah. So we're like literally walking on streets and touching walls that are a yeah. thousand years old. No it's big just deal. like, that's fine. Like we think of things around here, even in Virginia, which is a more historical part of America. We're like, oh, that's like 300 years old. That's wow. old. That's in a museum, you know, and they're like, oh, yeah, whatever. That's like modern been from the 1700s. Yeah, you my, know? Fa my favorite <laughs> skillet's 300 years old. No right. big deal. <laughs> right. They're like, yeah, this clay pot is like 500 years old. And, you know. uh, but anyway, so that was just So we went to Bassano del Grappa, which um, every, every surrounding town in that area took the kind of, I guess, a surname of sorts, del Grappa. Because mm -hmm. of the Monte del Grappa, the Monte, uh, Grappa. Monte, Grappa. Monte Grappa. So every yeah. city, you know, at uh, at some point decided, you know what, we're all going to be city del Grappa, uh, Bassano being one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that's because the mountain right there, that's very, I'm not going to say it's like a holy mountain, but it's like a revered mountain. It is. A lot, a lot of really important things happen there. Yeah, specifically related to like like World War One, World War Two. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of um, activity that happened there um, that really impacted that local area. Um, so they really revere that mountain. So everything around it is very much focused, and you can see it pretty much everywhere. Yeah, it's it's go. like it's it's like a, a range, you know, a small range. Yeah, that, you know, is really visible. Yeah. So they have their like Brenta River that runs right through the town with the Ponte Vecchia that goes across with the Monte Grappa in the background. It's, it's gorgeous. It's pretty picturesque. Yeah. We were just walking. We were just like, all right, Italy, we get it. You're beautiful. <laughs> you're gorgeous. Like you know, you're not even trying. Everywhere. It's like it's not even wearing its makeup. No. And it's like beautiful. No, it just, you know? just happens. It just rolls out of bed looking like that every day. Italy. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, when, then we went into to actually see the Monograppa factory, mm -hmm. which I also just like Aurora. We just come off of that, and we went into Monograppa, and we carry some of their pens. We know they're nice, but man, just was not prepared. It blew us away for what we were going to see. It blew us away. Um, so with that, um, we really had um, Giuseppe okay. Aquila, uh, Sorry, Giuseppe Aquila. He, um, we've interviewed him before because he actually came here. Mm -hmm. um, so we have some familiarity with him. He gave us like a full access tour. The amount that this guy knows about what's going on in his factory is amazing. Well, as the CEO, that just blew my mind. Like he took us around the tour. He was telling us temperatures and data points and everything. I'm like, what? Yeah, they, like, was... they condition their celluloid. They have their unlimited edition boxes. They have mm -hmm. a full time engraver, painter, and like enamel or jewel setter. Yeah. It's just like the craftsmanship they had there was really was incredible. quite impressive. And if you ever wonder why the Monte Grappa's steel nibs look so polished, beautiful, and shiny is because they actually mm. rhodium plate their steel nibs. They've got Yofo nibs, you know, like a lot of brands do, but they rhodium plate them so they've got this gold looking sheen. It's not gold, it's, you know, silver colored, but it shines and shimmers like a gold nib. It doesn't have the more matte uh, mm -hmm. stainless steel look. Yeah. So he, learning about that, like the attention, the attention to detail that they take, and the intentionality behind making things look good and having the really high quality blew us away. Yeah, and like we were having dinner with Giuseppe one night, and he was talking. We were talking about the Amaralio with the sailor nibs. We were like, "How in the world did you make that happen?" It was like this series of circumstances which probably can't even be replicated. Where he was talking about how special it was because Sailor never lets anybody else use their names. So he talked about that, and I was immediately like, I messaged my team and I was like, set aside an Amaralio for me because I had not yet saved them for myself. I was like, this truly is a special it's, pen. We might not have them, but no. like, I need to have one of these for his. It's not going to happen again. So, it's not going to happen again. <laughs> so but Giuseppe, Giuseppe is the type of person that's always trying to push the envelope, always trying to figure out what can be done better, bigger, bolder. He's never uh, the type to settle for like, all right, this is good. Yeah. So it's, it was a really fascinating journey and uh, meeting the leaders and learning the why behind these companies was just truly a treat and a gift. And yeah. hopefully we'll be able to pass that along to you sometime soon. Yeah, I know we're both pretty fired up coming off of this. We're gonna share a lot more with you. We learned a lot about it, I have tremendous respect. And I think for me, these were, this was my seventh and eighth 
factory tour Good that Lord. I've been on in the pen industry, my biggest takeaway to, to encompass all of them is just how much the local culture and like the culture of the company, the founders, the owners, uh, influences the products they put yeah. out. It's something so unique in the fountain pen industry and makes me want to tell the story and support all of them equally. Yeah, I kind of want to go back and talk about products we already <laughs> carried and you know sold through and be like, oh, this is why it's named this. You know? Exactly. But we'll be able to do that going forward. So we hope to do that more. Please let us know your comments if you have any questions. We are going to be sharing more in the future. But anyway, that's why we were gone last week. And uh, yeah, we're glad to be able to do that for yes, you. Yes, indeed. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and right on.